So um, because this was a six week series, we didn't have time for all the seven chakras. So we combined the last two in this class. So we're going to focus on the Ashna Chakra right here, the third eye, the intuition, inspiration, connection. And then Sahasrara or Crown Chakra above the head, it's called the Thousand Petal Lotus. It has many, many petals and it opens up to the universe, like a funnel, like a big lotus that's blooming all the time. So probably we have that closed off quite a bit nowadays in this time and age. So we need to work on getting it open. Back in the time, people were more connected with nature. They were sleeping better. They were sleepy when they were supposed to, when the melatonin is actually helping you. These days, people, if you look up from above, from the satellites, the earth, especially in North America, it's lit up all night long. So people work at night. They don't sleep at night. So we get a little bit of whacked up and out of balance. So we need to come back to these practices to help us. Um, so we all need to improve our health, our sleep, our meditation practice that can get us back to ourselves. So today it's a lot of um, seamless meditation, contemplation, and some movement, and some pranayama, the breath which is very important. That's our main connection uh, with ourselves and with the uh, divine. Because as we breathe and we are aware of the breath, we become present and connected to what truly is, not what the mind is lying to us all the time. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's sit up comfortably. <clears throat> I'm just going to move a little bit to wake up the spine. So we'll do some gentle circles here. Some Sufi grinds, holding onto the knees and circling around the tailbone, just like would be the middle of a circle. Inhale as you reach back. Exhale as you drop forward. And reverse direction. How's the music sound? Is it good volume? Okay, thanks. All right, come back to center. We got a fly in the practice today. She wants enlightenment too. Let's see who gets there first. <laughs> so we we'll come back to our center and we are going to work with the first pranayam, Anulom Vilom or Kapalabhati, alternate nostril. So we're going to support our Ajna Chakra. Uh, with um, the middle finger, and we can close and open the nostril with your uh, thumb and the ring finger. So we're going to inhale through the right. And exhale through the left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Continue this way. Inhale into the left and then repeat <clears throat> at your own pace. Lom Vilam means alternate nostrils in Nadi Shodhana. I think I said Kapalabhati is Nadi Shodhana. 
Kapala body is the fire breath from the belly. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing that, but we are doing this practice here to connect with our hemispheres in the brain. When we breathe through the left nostril, we activate the right side of the brain. This is called also the moon center. So Ha is the left side, the sun, the energy, the thinking, the analytical power. And the right side is the Ta or the moon. That has to do with calmness, meditation, creativity, relaxation, and so forth. So we are increasing the power of the right side as we breathe through the left. <clears throat> and now let's release that. Let's find out through which nostril we breathe more. So we're gonna put our index finger right below the nose and we exhale forcefully three times just to feel the heat. Where do you feel it from the right or the left? If you still feel you're breathing more through the right, then that means we gotta activate more the left nostril or the right side of the brain. So everybody felt kind of more on the right or? It's pretty normal since we're in the daytime and we've been active, we've been driving, we've been focusing on works and things. So now we need to balance the brain by breathing through the left to activate the right. So let's cover the right. And we breathe only to the left for a couple of minutes. Breathe in to the left, breathe out to the left. And if your nose is clogged up, obviously we do have some tissue because that kind of sometimes forces us to breathe through one nostril if we have, you know, sinus blockage on one side. So we always want to make sure we clear the nose. Both nostrils can be equally available. And uh, this is good practice to do also at nighttime. Uh, check what you're breathing through. And if you feel you're breathing too much to the right and the left side is totally closed off, you want to just close the right nostril just like we're doing now to make sure we calm down the brain, bring this area of the brain to lift up, to become active, to tell the pituitary gland and the pineal gland to release that melatonin, to relax, to sleep, to take care of our rest so where we can recover our body cells, our energy. And you may notice your body is starting to feel more relaxed, your heart rate slowing down, your thoughts not so important. So you become more present with what is, which is what we need to be practicing. Because we always try to live in the mind and think that we can think, we can change the environment, we can change the experience, but that takes a lot of effort and a lot of struggle, and it does not even give us the results we want. So learning to let go, to be more connected in the present, to know that we get there, and it's only going to be through the present moment. You cannot change anything in the past or in the future. You can only change it here now. 
So this practice teaches us to be okay where you are, no matter where we are, we are supposed to be here, right? We can't change that. So, all right. So the first major practice or set of this um, series today is called the master set. So master set means that we can become masters. Masters of what? Gonna be your master, your master. No, we wanna be masters of our own mind. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do. So um, it has three parts. So first one, it's like a child's pose. We're gonna reach our knees out to the edges of the mat. Forehead drops to the ground, or you can put a blanket if you want your head to rest on the blanket. <clears throat> and the hands are going to come behind our back, interlace here, and point the uh, fingers up. This brings all the energy from the lower body and from the heart, traveling down like a V shape, meeting at the Ajna chakra point, okay? So you're gonna feel the power of that. Your arms can be as low as your low back. They don't have to be high up if they don't want to. So all the energy, all the blood, all the information drops into the head now. Let me just breathe. Connect with your third eye point, your intuition, your inspiration, your sense of knowing, knowing yourself, knowing what's right for you, knowing what you need to do next, all of those things can come when we develop this sense of intuition. We just know intuitively that something is good to do and we will do it. If we have a sense that is not right or good to do, we just won't do it. So we learn to listen, hopefully, to this intuition. Because the body has wisdom, not just the mind. The body has usually the truer wisdom. It's not influenced by any judgments or analytical thinking or overthinking or anything that can be of the mind, obsessiveness, possessiveness. We're dropping all this body energy into the Ashna Chakra to help it out to open up this third eye so we can see the world more clearly and we can see also our inner realms more clearly. There's a lot more to know about the inner world than the outer world. These days we know so much of the outer world that is almost disturbing and overwhelming. And we forget to look deep inside where we can find that peace, that connection, that comfort and joy that we can only create and can be masters of. <clears throat> Nobody can give it to us. We cannot buy it. We cannot exchange it. We cannot sell it. But we can produce it internally. All right, release the hands now and let them rest by your feet. And take a few breaths here before we do the second part of this set. Relaxing your wrist and arms. Bringing the eyes up and in to look between the eyebrows. Enhancing the power of your Ashna Chakra.
The color of this chakra is a beautiful violet or an amethyst color. You can imagine a tetrahedron of amethyst, like a gem. It's a cave of amethyst. And you can step into that cave. And from that cave, you can look deep within your soul. This asana chakra, it's also called the window to the soul. All right, let's release that pose. Second one is maybe the most challenging, but we'll do what we can here. We're going to sit into a squat, but bring our hands inside the legs and around the ankles, and then you sit into a kundalini squat. All right, so you're going to support yourself in the power of your thoughts. And this one, you may not be able to hold a lot, but it can be held just any amount that you can. You're going to sit up to lift the chest through, and your thighs are parallel to the ground. And you just breathe here. As we master this pose, basically we master the body, which is the stallion that wants to run and jump and do silly things. And now we tell it to sit still and behave and listen and struggle. Because <laughs> we do need to struggle sometimes in life to, to get to patience and calmness. Sometimes we have to do the opposite to bring us there. This is also very good for the change of season. Uh, we need a lot more red blood cells and to travel through the body with the changes. So the uh, femur bone matures the red blood cells. But this is intense and powerful, but you can just let it go. Okay, so then inhaling coming up a little bit with the hands on the floor, just to recover. That's also hanging pose or ragdoll pose. It's very good for the crown chakra because it drops the head below the heart. And again, all the energy comes to the top of the head. So bend the knees and wrap your hands around the elbows and just hang forward like a rag doll. This is just a little recovery before the third uh, pose of the set. So the third one is going to be the opposite of the first. We're going to open the front body. So we're going to have our knees apart. And we can sit between the heels if we're able, or sit on the blanket if we need to. Okay. So you can put your blanket like a saddle. You're sitting on that saddle. You can roll it up like a cylinder. Okay, and then we're going to drop back so we can open the chest. And the Ashna Chakra, it's going to be nicely open. Bring the eyes up and in to look between the eyebrows and then close the eyelids. This can be done at any level. It doesn't have to be a certain way. You can just be up here and you're just looking up and in between the eyebrows. It's the same benefit. Mm. Right. You can go down like Meredith, but you don't have to. Yeah, you can be anywhere in between on the elbows or all the way down and just put that gaze up and in between the eyebrows. Mm. This will open the whole front body, and again, it's going to channel all the energy up into the Ashna Chakra. It's part of the master set, mastering our energy, our 
body, our mind, our emotions. And when we master all that, we master our ego, we master ourselves, then we are called enlightened. <laughs> Few more breaths here. Just keeping that gaze focused between the eyebrows. That's the most important thing. Basically, everything we do here is challenging so we can overcome um, all of this that is of the body of the mind so we can transcend it and be above it all so it is for a purpose for a great purpose for the greater good because we have clinged so much to this body to this physical uh, to this earth and the uh, heaviness of it so we need to learn to overcome some of those things so we can feel lighter in body, mind, and spirit. And then we can feel like we're more up here above our head, above our mind, above our thoughts, and less clingy or attached to the body and the physical world. So we become more free, lighter, more advanced as human beings, enlightened, or transcended beings, well, at least temporarily, and the more you practice, the lighter you become, and the easier it will be to let go. All right, let's let go of this one very gently, thumb and up. Okay, now we need to rest from this one, so we'll come to a easy shavasana just for two minutes. So we need to rest our backs and then come back to neutral. So stretch your legs out. And Shavasana is a great pose for the crown chakra because we get that crown chakra connected with all the body from head to toe in one line. And the other great or most beneficial pose of the crown chakra would be the sitting meditation pose which we will do at the end. So recover your breath, come back to peace. Focus on the third eye point. Connect within, travel within, and listen and feel, notice what's going on. What feedback do you get? What do you hear? What do you see? So we're going to continue and stay here, but we're going to use the strap to uh, bring the right leg up, to activate the right side of the body, bring the energy up. So grab your foot into your belt, and bring it slightly towards the body without forcing too much, just a gentle stretch. And we're keeping the left leg nice and long. Activating the right side. And imagine a line of energy from the back of your heel into the hip bone. Hip bone through the chest. 
all the way to the throat, reaching up to the middle of your forehead. Shifting the energy into the higher chakras of the body. Let's let go of that, bend the knee, drop the foot, and bring the left foot into the belt. Extend the right leg and pull gently towards you. Keeping the right leg aligned and long. Activating the sciatic nerve, it all connects into the spine, and from there, the spine goes to the neck, to the head, connecting all the way up into the brain in the pineal gland between the eyebrows. Pineal gland, it's also called the seat of the soul. And it's the gland that releases melatonin during the night and serotonin during the day. So we can simply activate this gland and this area in the body by looking up and in and then closing the eyelids, keeping our attention there or tapping the forehead, that area between the eyebrows, or putting pressure with the thumb, or ring finger, whichever finger you want really, it doesn't matter. So let's apply some pressure <laughs> now. And look there and put pressure to enhance it even more. And say to yourself, I am inspired. My life flows freely, freely when I stay connected. My life flows freely when I stay connected. Great, and let's release the leg. And we're going to come on up to see it. The next one, we're going to use the block. We're going to have the left foot into the inner thigh, your right leg out. And the block right here in front. So we're going to slide our hands down and stretch forward until you meet the block with your forehead. So again, we are bringing the brain and the heart at the same level. And we are enhancing this pineal gland action by putting pressure on our forehead. Eyes are closed, up and in, meeting at the eyebrow point, the third eye. And the sound you hear now is ah, uh, like an um, but it's an ah. Uh, it's the sound for the crown chakra.
And maybe some of you need to put a blanket on the block for support. You can also do that. Or get two blocks if you need them. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> In our affirmation here would be, I am connected to my purpose. Say that to yourself or simply see how it resonates with you. I am connected with my purpose. And let's go ahead and inhale, lift up, and we'll switch to the other side. And two blocks would be good, uh, actually, for most of you. So yeah, feel free to get a block. <clears throat> and now we're gonna lean over to the front, stretching towards the block. Reconnect with your third eye. Allow the body to find a comfortable position. And we'll have another affirmation here. I have all the answers inside of me. Use the block, we get many blocks. Make a strong head shape with your blocks. <laughs> There is great energy in those shapes in the world. The pyramids have the greatest energy. Especially when they are made of copper. <laughs> Does everybody have two blocks now nearby? Yeah? Jane, let me get you one more block. <laughs> you got two. Oh, oh, got it. I see. You're just not enough to. Okay. Can't put this one on the bottom. And two more on top. It's okay. Use all the props you got. Oh. Whatever feels good. I have all the answers inside of me. To see how you resonate with that. And start to believe that you do have all the answers inside. Other people may tell you that's not true, but you know that is true for you. And 
Okay, we're going to let go of that pose and we'll have one more and then we get to meditate. This one is kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to have the blocks at our shoulder levels and we're going to have the blanket in front for our forehead. So I'm going to lay down on the belly and the shoulders are resting on the blocks, the forehead on the mat, on the blanket, yeah? and arms to the side. So it kind of supports our shoulders and opens up the front of the shoulders, creates a squeeze or a valley between the shoulder blades. And we still drop into our intuition point and dwell there for the next three to five minutes. And then we get everything primed and ready for a good meditation. And some chanting. Be prepared. We're going to sing along with this guy that says, ah, we're going to do that. Because it's really good for the uh, crown chakra. It's really going to open up for us. <laughs> Nice. And allow the arms to go to your side with the palms up. And just simply connect here again, connect inside of you. Breathe into the Ashna Chakra. And tell yourself, I trust the higher power and wisdom inside of me. I am deeply connected with my higher truth. And I choose to live in truth because that's where the power is. My truth is my power. When I speak and live my truth, I am powerful. There's no one like me in this universe. So why not just be me? Everybody else is taken anyway. I will read you now one of my poems about this divine presence that we all are. It's called Rise Up. Rise up, divine presence. Remember who you are. Divine presence embodied in human existence. So the creator can have an experience of life through you. You came here to fall and to learn how to get up to grow, to expand, to live, love, and evolve. The journey of life is our gift from our creator. The way we live and love, it's our gift back to him or her. She has been generous, offering us free will. Let's be equally generous by providing, by proving her we are to be trusted. Love, care, Protect and support each other and life on earth. Our dear planet needs each and everyone. Rise up and overcome. Fall a thousand times and get up a thousand more. That's how we learn. Being afraid of failure is being afraid of learning. Anyone who's afraid to fail, it's afraid of life itself. So therefore, rise up and overcome. That's what you came here for. Don't ever hesitate. Just rise up, 
smile, and there you are. Recreated, reborn again. Rise up, conquer life. It's the law of the living. Do not be dead alive. Do not be dead alive. That's what I say to you. I say to you. All right, divine beings, let's slowly and gently come on out of that pose. And we'll move to our seated comfortable position. So sit on your block or your blanket to just to be comfortable in your hips and knees. And let those knees drop down like a waterfall. When your seat bones are higher, it becomes more comfortable. So let's start to breathe in and we start by chanting along with the sound. Inhale. Ah. Inhale again. Ah. The sounds resonate from the outside, but when you think it, it resonates from inside of you and opens up all of these channels of the child. Ah. 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 Don't be afraid to let out the sound. It doesn't matter how it sounds. Uh, um, Because many of us may be heard when you're young, oh, don't sing, don't talk, you don't have a voice, whatever. That's not true. Everybody has a voice. That might have to be a soprano voice. Um, uh, bless you. Um, let your voice be heard and accept it as it is. Do not judge or try to change it. Um, 
Notice how your mind state changes as you change, how your heart energy changes. And now we just simply sit here in silence. You can continue to focus your eyes up and in between the eyebrows. Or you can imagine a ring of light above your head. The color of the Sahasrara Chakra is the color of brilliant light. And some people like it to be lilac or very light purple. I think it's actually very luminous like the sun, the white sun. That's how I see it when I get in deep meditation. So I connect with that, but whatever you connect with. So imagine this white light or light purple, lavender color light, whatever you connect with. Imagine there's a lotus flower of that color on the top of your head. And this lotus expands in a thousand million kind of petals it has. And it receives and takes in all the time. It's always receiving. So allow this funnel of the lotus to take in all the energy from above. And get into the crown of the head. Connect with this divine power, this wisdom and knowledge. This power that knows everything from beginning to no end. Infinite knowledge, precious knowledge. Wisdom, understanding, and love. It encompasses everything that we will ever need. So let's sit and receive this power, this grace, this freedom, this gift of life. That's all we have to do to sit still, allow and receive. Let go of the ego mind, the self-created persona that we needed to create to protect ourselves. There's no need to protect from this divine power. We let go of all the shells, all the blockages. Let go of the fear to be seen be heard as we are, becoming pure, just like little children. Nothing you do can be wrong or judged in front of this power. You are loved and seen as you are, embraced, supported, and cherished as you are. Feel this white light and love surrounding you from all directions, above and below, left and right, front and back, in all six directions. Breathe it all in, relax into this energy and melt into it. Feel how loving it is. Soak it all in. Allow it to flow through your blood. Divine protection.
We are children of light. We just forgot. Know thyself, drop into yourself. Let go of anything that doesn't serve you. Receive the gifts, stay open. Allow and let go. Be grateful. I am not who you think I am. I am who I am and I am truth. Feel this light transforming, transmitting, and healing your body and mind. Connecting you back to the source, deep inside the earth, through the root chakra, and up to the sky, to the crown. Feel connected, feel empowered. Feel the bliss. Take a few minutes if you'd like to write down if anything relevant came to mind. You have a little paper and a pen. So lay down your mat and write or daydream, whatever you need for the next four minutes. Just feeling like a little child that had seen something that's never seen before. Or rest in Shavasana if you need to. Whatever you need, it's okay. And tell yourself over and over, I am inspired, I'm a divine being, I am connected and I am loved. Let your soul be taken away by the sound and see what it takes you. Do not hear. Thank you. 
allow your soul to be joyful, jumping around, happy and free. Just like the fingers touching the strings, jumping around. Let your spirit be free. Let it be led to the light. Take notice how this moment is when you are not in your ego. Notice how much you enjoy it. Letting go the veil of delusion of this created ego and dwelling in the truth of the being. I am not who you want me to be. I am not who you think I am. I am and I am and I am me. Imagine you are a little child that is crossing this little creek, jumping from stone to stone. And the sun shines from above between the branches of the tree, right in your face and cheeks and hair. And just keep skipping from rock to rock, joyfully, peacefully, gracefully. Be that child, bring it back to life. No worries. Mm -hmm. 